Well, today I'm gonna to be doing another dollar store DIY video, and that means that this is part two to my last video. When I was at the dollar store a few weeks ago, I came up with so many good ideas for DIYs. My mind was blown, light bulbs were going off in my head, and so I have a couple videos planned, and this is the second one that I'm bringing to you guys. So, without further ado, I'm just gonna get started. I really hope that you like these DIYs. If you do, then leave me a comment down below. Let me know that you like them, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because I would really, 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 really appreciate it. Okay, so let's get started. So the first DIY up is using none other than a placemat. These are super, super cheap, obviously, wherever you go, but at the dollar store, you're gonna get it for the cheapest price possible. And honestly, this DIY turned out really, really pretty. I'm really pleased with it. My husband said that this is something that you could literally buy from a store, and he said I should turn around and make a business out of it, but I said no, my focus right now is on DIYs for YouTube. So let's get started with this one. Okay, so here is the dollar store placemat that I picked up, and it was $2, so super, super affordable you just need a placemat that's lightish in color for this project so now on to drawing out the design and what I picked is to draw three overlapping mountains and a Sun in the middle and this design is actually a popular print I've seen online and I just love how simple yet pretty it is Next, I'm just going ahead and painting the tapestry. So I grabbed the three main paint colors, which are red, orange, and yellow, plus white and black. For the first section of the mountain, I've made this really nice orangey red color by mixing red, orange, and a little bit of black. And I'm just loading up the brush and painting just enough to cover the black lines as well as the sides of the tapestry. For the next section, I mixed up a coral-ish color and once again, just painting in the lines here. And then for the final mountain, I created a light coral slash pink color. The paints actually dried a bit darker on the tapestry than they were in the dish, but the colors were still really, really pretty. For the main background, I initially actually wasn't going to paint it at all, but I felt it looked a little bit odd, so I mixed up a nice off-white color, which was basically a ton of white paint with a drop of yellow and a drop of orange added in as well. And then finally for the sun, I painted it a mustard yellowy color, which I love. And then next up, I wanted to add a little fringe onto the bottom of the tapestry. I took a piece of cardboard and cut a slit on either end. I then grabbed some regular cream colored yarn and just slipped the end of the yarn into one of those slits. And then I started wrapping it around the cardboard a bunch of times. I placed the end of the yarn in the other slit and cut along the edge using some scissors. I measured out a piece of yarn that was about an inch longer than the tapestry and began attaching the small pieces of yarn to it. To do this, I basically folded the yarn in half to create a little loop, put it under the long string of yarn, and then threaded the bottom up through the loop. Once it's tightened, you can still totally move it along the string and into place next to the previous piece of yarn. Then once I had my full piece of fringe ready to go, I attached it to the bottom of the tapestry on that little white section using hot glue. And then after that, I just flipped it over and secured the ends of the main string of that fringe to the back of the tapestry as well. Finally, we need to be able to hang this piece of art, so I took a simple wood dowel and I measured it to be about half an inch longer than the tapestry. The edge that I sawed was a little bit rough, so I smoothed it out with a piece of sandpaper, which was super, super easy. Then I attached the tapestry to the wood dowel at the top using that trusty hot glue gun. I basically just did a line of hot glue on the top. I rolled the dowel about halfway over and did another line of hot glue and that was just perfect. So I didn't want to take too much of the length off of the tapestry which is why I didn't roll the dowel all the way over. Then to be able to hang the actual tapestry on the wall, I grabbed some thin twine and tied it on either side of the dowel and my cute little wall tapestry was complete. I was really, really 
pleased with how this one turned out. I thought it was so, so cute. And I definitely thought that this is something that you could buy at a proper store. I also just think it goes perfectly with that kind of like boho slash mid-century modern type of vibe. And once you add on the little fringe at the bottom, it just looks so put together and so professional. So I'm really pleased with how that one turned out. The next DIY up is a mirror, but the inspiration for this actually came from me walking around the dollar store and finding these bundles of really long wood sticks. Now, these sticks, I know what they're used for. They're usually put into really long vases and they're used as a bit of an accent piece. But in this instance, I had other ideas and intentions. So let's get started with this mirror tutorial. So just to start off, I'm taking this decorative mirror that I have and flipping it over and removing the backing. I previously bought this mirror from the dollar store and painted it gold in my last apartment, so I thought it'd just be really good to reuse it. Though just so you know, you can buy individual circle mirrors from typically every single dollar store that I've seen. Once the mirror is removed, I'm just taking the cardboard circle backing and attaching the mirror to it using a generous amount of hot glue. Now if your mirror doesn't have this cardboard backing, you can just make one out of any cardboard box. These are the wood sticks that I found for just $2 and what's really actually nice about them is the light wood color. They're also already cut in half and they're pretty lightweight and thin. I'm just taking some wire cutters and cutting a bunch of pieces into three sizes which are half an inch, one inch, and 1.5 inches. Then taking the half inch pieces, I'm gluing them around the mirror and onto the cardboard. I made sure to use the flat edge of the sticks on the bottom with the round side facing up. And applying the sticks all the way around was really just to create a bigger flat base around the mirror and will also act as a bit of a background a little bit later on. Next up, I'm taking the one inch pieces now and I'm hot gluing them sticking out from the mirror all the way around. I applied the hot glue to both the existing sticks and the edge of the mirror itself and made sure that there was just enough hot glue so that it would stick but not too much that it was oozing out from the sides. Once those were applied all the way around, I'm now moving on to the one and a half inch pieces. So I'm flipping the mirror over and gluing them on creating another layer of spikes. Now after all of those sticks were glued on, I really made sure to apply a bunch of hot glue all the way around just to make sure that all of those were super, super secure. Finally, I wanted to add a little something extra to this mirror and I thought it'd be cool to turn it into a jewelry holder. So I cut a 13 inch piece of wood stick and painted it black. And then using hot glue, I attached it two thirds of the way down the mirror. I really, really reinforced it with a couple more layers of hot glue because I didn't want it to go anywhere. And the backing to my mirror did have a little picture hanging hook, but if not, you could just attach a little piece of string using hot glue as well. love the way that this turned out. I think in the future I might attempt to do this on a bigger mirror. At the actual dollar store when I was there the last time I did see a bigger round mirror but I just decided it made sense to use a mirror that I already had that I didn't really have a use for and that was just away in my closet so I thought that was a good idea but in the future like I mentioned I would probably do another bigger one and then I would have both of them together and that would look really really cool. And as always I like to save the best for last and my favorite 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 DIY that I've done in this video is what you're gonna see right now. Honestly I don't know how I came up with this and made it so good. I had a few different iterations throughout this process so it wasn't the most straightforward but the way that I'm gonna explain it to you is gonna make it so that you can make this so easily in such a straightforward way and have a piece of accent decor that will just go with your space, be super boho, and is honestly so affordable and so easy to do. So without further ado, let's get started. So to kick things off for this tray, I found this really pretty wood placemat for just $1.50 and if you're an OG, you know that I've used this exact same placemat before and I turned it into a clutch purse, but this time I have some other ideas. So to start off, I'm just removing the ribbon trim around the edges. I initially tried to remove it with scissors because I was too lazy to find my seam ripper, but then finally I gave in, found my seam ripper and removed the whole trim in just about a minute. It was super, super fast with that. Then I found these certificate frames that are made out of real wood, also from the dollar store. I picked up two of them and removed the glass and backing out of them and then just painted them a nice black matte with acrylic paint. Next I took my pliers or wire cutters and I pulled out the little metal pieces that keep the glass in place. 
Then I took my placemat and basically just cut it to be the same size of the frames. These placemats have a little gap in between each piece of wood so cutting it was super simple. Then moving along, I just took my trusty E6000 glue and I applied it all the way around the back of the frame and attached the placemat to it with the good side of the placemat facing down. I used some clamps to hold it in place but you could just use a heavy book or a box or whatever you have. After that dried, I flipped the tray over and applied another layer of E6000 along the frame and glued the second frame on top and this basically created a higher edge to the tray and made it look really professional. This tray was definitely my favorite. I just think it turned out so pretty. It's so unique looking, which as always is what I'm going for when I do these DIY videos. So let me know down below which was your favorite DIY out of these three. I'm always curious to know whether you have the same taste as me or a little bit different or whether you like all of them like I do or just some of them. Let me know because that helps me also navigate what type of projects I'll do in the future as well. My next favorite to the tray was probably the wall tapestry and third was the mirror but I honestly think all of them worked out really, really nicely. And I'm really, really happy when that happens. To be honest, I had two other projects that I was going to include in this video, but I just felt like they weren't at the same standard of what I'd like them to be at. So I've already thought of a couple ways to make them better and I'm gonna include them therefore in an upcoming video so that I have more content that I can give to you. And I just thought that that makes sense. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, now what would mean a super lot to me is if you could hit the like button, leave me a comment down below, and even subscribe to me on this channel. And those three things together would mean so much to me because it would let the YouTube algorithm know that this is a good video to watch so that I can recommend it to other people and also so that my channel can grow and so that in the end, I could create more good content for you. So it would really just be a win-win. If you could do those things, it would mean a lot to me. But also, you can check me out on Instagram. I'm at DIYDelia with an underscore at the end. That would also mean a lot to me. Thank you once again for watching and until next time. Bye.